How might an Anglo-Saxon turn sheep into something that they could wear? Well, first of all, they need to shear their sheep. They need to cut off the fleece, but they can't really wear this. I need to turn this into cloth. It's quite tangly, so the first thing I need to do is I need to comb that fleece until it's nice and fluffy, but I still can't wear this. So the next thing I need to do is turn this fluffy stuff into yarn or thread using a drop spindle. A drop spindle is basically a stick with a circular weight on the bottom, a spindle whorl. This whorl happens to be made of wood, but the Anglo-Saxons used all sorts of materials such as clay, so pottery, recycled Roman tile, antler, chalk. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a twist in this and as it twists I'm going to pull out my fluffy stuff, my combed wool and the twist will travel up and turn it into thread. Problem is I can't wear this so let's go inside and have a look at an Anglo-Saxon loom. So this is called a warp weighted loom. It's called a warp weighted loom because all the threads that hang down are called the warp and if we follow these threads to the bottom you'll see that they have weights tied at the bottom so it's warp weighted and the reason it's got weights tied on the bottom is to hold these warp threads tight. The warp threads are tied to different rods in different groups and if a particular rod is pulled forward, I get a particular gap in my warp threads through which I can pass the weft. So let's have a go at weaving just one row. First of all, what I'm doing here is I'm weaving a selvage edge with some tablets. You'll see that these little wooden tablets have holes in and through the holes I have threaded some of these warp threads. I'm doing this because we find this particular tablet woven selvage edge in Anglo-Saxon cloth. So the first thing I do is I take my weft. My weft is the thread that goes backwards and forwards. I pass the weft through the gap in my tablets. Pull that up a little bit. And then what you'll see, if I put my hand behind the threads, if I turn these tablets towards me, all of those threads change position and that's how I weave that tablet edge. Now I've done that, I'm going to take my weft, pass it through the gap that's made because I've got this heddle rod pulled forward. I'm going to weave another tablet woven edge on this side. I then get my pin beater which is made from antler. I push up the threads of that weft and now what I need to do, I've finished with this rod, I need to put this rod back, pull the next one forward and what that's going to do is pull forward a completely different set of threads which means I've now got a completely different gap. I'm now going to take my weaving sword or weaving baton. I'm going to pass it into that gap in my warp threads and then what I'm going to do is beat up the row that I've just done. And all that effort gives you beautiful cloth. And as the cloth is woven, the weaver winds it onto the beam at the top of the loom.